Hey everyone, so I really like the Mini GT brand if you watch my reviews. Uh, but there is a shortcoming. Uh, it's basically the, the price. The price is actually good considering what you get. But, you know, if you're interested in getting a model with more details, this is kind of a tutorial and uh, an introduction to some product, a product I'm going to put up for sale. So they're going to be disc, disc brake systems. You know, the Mini GTs are great, but for the price, they can't really budget in, you know, disc brake systems. But they very often make castings of very modern vehicles with giant holes, right? So it's just like a big black hole of air there. So it looks a little bit odd sometimes. Um, this, you can actually take a chrome paint pen and uh, add the reflectivity if you wanted to. But this one is a tougher challenge. So I've decided to 3D print my own brake systems, and then I'm gonna I put them on Shapeways.com. So if you want to start modeling your own Mini GTs, you know you can actually do so. So let's uh, now this one I'm not gonna mod because there's two screws, and one screw is underneath this thing, and I couldn't figure out how to get this thing off without ruining it. But I will show you a, a different one that I did manage to get off here. Uh, let's see, where is it? Here's an M4. So I use these mobile phone tools. This is like a, it's meant to open, you know, a, a mobile phone. It gets underneath the screen and pries the screen off. But here, you know, because it's soft, it's because it's plastic, it's not going to scratch the paint. If you can just find a little edge, you can start prying it off. And Mini GT uses a soft, like, glue so it doesn't actually destroy the part. You actually don't want to pry here because you might snap the plastic there but if you pry right here and here that's how I got this one off. Okay so now I do have a one that I haven't modded yet so we're gonna do a tutorial here and uh, actually you know what let me show you the brakes first. I designed four different styles of brakes and I have a resin printer, so the ones on Shapeways are actually better than this because they use an SLA printer. It's higher detail. But uh, so you'll see here, I have uh, slots, and then I have swept surf, swept slots, swept slots, and then I also have two types of uh, cross drilled, just an equidistant cross drilled, and then this one is supposed to be like a. A three straight lines and then kind of like the slots actually so those are the four different styles of uh, brake rotors that I've designed and then the calipers are all different also it might be a little hard to see let me get a better light right in here all right so let's see so this one just has two little dimples in it this one is uh, I don't know how to describe that one this one's a little rounded and then this one has three so the each rotor is different and then each caliper is also different and then once you start messing with paint you can have a whole bunch of different combinations you know uh, this one has a black paint wash uh, these are just silver of course I have a brown paint wash I used and so you can obviously paint them what I did is I, I used an airbrush and I sprayed it all silver first and then I used some paint brushes to paint the calipers and then a paint wash to do the rotors but um, you could also use markers if you're really careful because you know these are going to sit inside of a wheel so you're not going to touch them too often All right, so it is possible to use markers here are some markers that I find uh, pretty useful they're uh, from Aliexpress I think they're like copycat sta staplers or something but you'll see the tip here it's a fine tip and uh, I'll just draw here so this is a metallic. It's a, a metallic set of 10 colors. And I find that they're quite useful. But I'm pretty sure being markers, yeah, so you can smudge it. But, you know, again, if this is going to sit inside of a wheel and you're careful, it won't matter because you'll never touch it again, right? So here's a silver. Uh, let's just add a little silver there, right? So, well, it's hard to see there. There, see, I covered, I pretty much painted that silver again. Or let's do it right this, right there. See, so it's very effective, very quick. You know these these markers. I'm sure you can get them on eBay or maybe Amazon. 
but here they look like that. All right. You could also I've also used Sharpie Ultra Fines before, you know, but uh, I find that paintbrushes are a little bit better. They get into the nooks and crannies. You know, this is actually a hard plastic nib, so it has a harder time to uh, get into nooks and crannies. Whereas those other brushes worked better. Worked better, I mean. Okay, so again, uh, the Shapeways ones won't have all these supports. They're just gonna. It's different. Anyways, you can check out that link I'll add. Alright, so let's take a look here. We have this uh, Liberty Walk Huracan here. I gotta wipe my hands off. That blue marker is gonna get all over this model. Alright, so there's no need the, for the phone thing because it doesn't have an additional piece. Let's get that out of there. And then, uh, you know, I, I put the years. You might be wondering what that is. I use that so I know when this uh, car came out. I believe this Huracan was available between you know, 2014 and 2019. So the beautiful thing about Mini GT is they screwed together their models. So this is what makes customizing so easy. And this is also why Auto World, many green lights, most green lights, and TLD don't make it nice for you guys. It's, I really wish they would uh, use screws so they could fix problems and do this sort of thing, you know? Okay, so the, obviously the uh, tires are on the axles. Now I do have to warn you guys, some of the spokes, you know, they look, they look real, so they're very thin, they're very fragile. This one isn't so bad, but the uh, Continental GT, the tension on this wheel with the axle was so tight, as I was prying this off, it actually started to bend the spokes. So this is the only one out of like 10 that had a problem. So most likely you won't have an issue. You most likely won't have to have tools. So what I do is I just grip the, grip this thing like this, and I just slowly twist one back and forth, back and forth. And then well, as I'm doing that, I'm pulling this hand outwards. There. So you'll see it's got, this one has uh, flutes. But I've noticed that other ones would have a crosshatch uh, pattern, and then other ones are perfectly smooth. So Mini GT has used three different types of, of axles. Uh, this one works, you know, pretty well, and this, the smoothest one is even easier. It's the one with the crosshatch uh, diamond pattern that grips the plastic a lot. But if you just wiggle it, you know that's what's going on. It's pretty easy. You don't need to take the other side off. You only need to take one one wheel off. So I'm going to do that now for the, the front one. So I'm just going to hold this. Just, you know, twist it just like a five degrees each way and then pull on it. So there we go. Oh, or in this case, this side came out. All right, so that's easy fix. Well, easy uh, disassembly. Now, Here's a, I'm going to put a silver rotor and a gold caliper in this guy. I've noticed amongst the 10 or so Mini GTs that this diameter changes on the based on the wheel size. The, the diameter of gripping the axle, but also the inside diameter of the wheel. So the smallest uh, diameter I found was the BMW M4. But it, I designed basically the brake system to fit this as large as possible and you'll obviously see that it's in there but when you get into the super large wheels like this Taycan now you see that same size uh, brake diameter has a bigger gap it actually looks more realistic uh, let's see what else if I have some really large ones these uh, Skylines there's a pretty big gap in there because you know these are just huge diameter wheels on these Liberty Walks these Forgiato wheels okay so with that said I just chose the average for the, the inside hole diameter of this rotor so in this case it's pretty loose so in this case I actually need to have some glue to keep that thing from just rattling around and so what I did is I bought this little dropper with this metal tip 
very cheap. You can get 10 of them for like 2 bucks or something on AliExpress. And I just have school glue in here. You know, anything that dries clear. And the reason why I do use school glue is if, uh, you know, I want to take this thing out in the future. I could just soak it in water and it'll, it'll work uh, itself soft again. Alright, so that's all I do. So I'm going to do that on all four. So even though this one has the axle, it's really no big deal, right? You just slide it on that way. Okay, got a little school glue on all these guys. I would say maybe a third of them, it was just a friction fit. A third of them were a bit loose. And then a third of them I had to actually file out the hole because the this inside plastic diameter was too large. So you want to get like a jeweler's set of uh, files. This is a round one. So I would literally just take the thing, jam this in there, and then twist it. And you can see wh where it stopped. It's around here because that's where all the plastic is. So that's a really quick and easy way to make this hole larger. All right. Now, with the super loose ones like this, the rotor doesn't want to lay flat. You see how it moves? The reason why is there isn't a flat spot as tall as the caliper. And I had to do that because I had to make some choices. Uh, Shapeways won't allow you to print something very tall and thin. So I could do it for myself, but then none of you guys could actually buy these. Because Shapeways would reject the uh, CAD file. They won't, oh, they won't print it. So, you know, that's, a, that's one of the choices you have to decide if, if it's worth buying for you. It's not as realistic to not have the, uh, the flat hat or whatever that holds the rotor on. But with a little school glue, you know, as long as it gets tacky, you can just set, the, set it so it sits horizontal with the glue. I'm just pressing where the caliper is, and then see, and I'm eyeballing the horizontalness of it. So that should be all right there. Same here. Okay. Now, when uh, you know when this uh, brake rotor hole is the same size as this plastic on the wheel, it's just aligned because it's sliding on the the shaft there. So it's not an issue. It's just really an issue with this very loose ones. But the school glue will take care of it. Alright. So you could press this back on the axle and then put it in there. But I found that sometimes I press the axle on so so high, tight that it actually doesn't fit this plastic gap here. So let me get another angle here. So I found that it's just easier to put the car back together and then slide the axle through, and then put the second the second wheel on. I'm not going to use the electric uh, screwdriver to tighten it because it's so powerful. I think it'll strip the hole out. So you always want to use just a hand screwdriver. In this case, I bought a set of like electronics screwdrivers. They're very cheap as well. You always want to use the right size uh, screwdriver for the right for the head, otherwise you'll strip it out. And then I'm also backing it up until I find the thread. You'll very often hear a click, or you'll just feel the, the thing jump a little bit, and so it found the thread. If you don't do that, you'll probably cross-thread it, because this metal is really soft. Okay, so that thing's all together, but the way that Mini GT designs it, it's really easy to just take the axle and slide it through. So in this case, the staggered wheel. And now, I'll just press it on until it bottoms out against the actual body of the car. Now, just like I was wiggling it to pull it off, I'm going to wiggle this and push it on. Alright, there you go. Not too difficult. Same on this side. Just slide it through the whole cow. Trying to find the other side, there we go. And then again, I'm going to wiggle and push this thing on at the same time. Okay, 
I did notice sometimes if you you couldn't actually push it a lot, so there's a lot of friction and then the thing won't want to roll anymore. Oh, well, unfortunately these these wheels are so deep, the way they were designed, it's actually pretty hard to see the brake I just put in there. The back is a little more visible. Let's see. Yeah, that's also the reason why I don't like black wheels. Even though I put a silver brake back there. Well, on this Huracan, maybe it's not the best idea. But that's why I did it on a bunch of other ones, and I shall show you. Actually, there's one more I, I haven't quite finished. I did this Aventador, and I actually used a color shift paint on this one. I sprayed the bottom color shift. I use this brand of paints here called the Vallejo Shifters. They come in six packs. I bought two of the six packs, but I find that it's a waste of money. You only need to buy one of the six packs because they're almost all identical. There's either a purple one or a greenish one, and there is one blue one. But basically, of a six pack, you're getting like three variations of a purple and three variations of a green, it seems. So, I would suggest you just buy one of the six packs to start with if you want to save money. Alright, so I'm going to just slide this guy through here. I also uh, added that color shift to the the wheels. This had black wheels. So this one has a lot, much longer strong longer flutes I guess. So again I'm gonna just oh that one's pretty easy. Alright. I guess push it a little more. Alright. So simple enough. Yeah really deep this this style of wheel. There is a gold caliper back there. A silver rotor you can see there on okay so that's let's just put this up here so let's see what else do I have here I guess I'll show you the Taycan so the Taycan yeah you kind of saw before I put yellow calipers because I saw that on a real photograph mm, seems to be some smudge paint there Obviously, uh, the silver rotor. And since I had it apart, I went and sprayed a lot of the interior, this tan color, because I did see a photo with a tan interior. But I left the dashboard black. So for how I did that, I actually shot the entire thing tan, and then I used alcohol and Q-tips, and I removed the tan from the top of the dashboard. It took a lot. It took like 10 Q-tips to get all that paint off. But that is a way to do it because uh, the dashboard was actually glued to the rest of the interior and I didn't want to break it so I just thought it'd be easier to just paint it and remove the excess paint later alright so that's this one yeah obviously it's not as nice to have uh, you know the brakes spin with the wheels but uh, I don't see an, uh, anywhere to add a tab right so it's one of the shortcomings so it was never designed to have brakes but if you're going to do photography, obviously just spin it in the right location and it'll look right. Okay. Let's see what else. I do have another Huracan here, this green one. I did the color shift paint and I added silver rims because as I was, I didn't let it dry long enough. So as I was pushing it on, I actually scraped some of the color shift off. And this one has red calipers. But I'll tell you a little tip here. If you want to paint the rim of a wheel pretty easily, you can take a silver, you know, paint marker or paint pen and just hold it against the, the lip of the wheel and then just spin it like this. Or really, you want to spin it away from the nib. So that's what I did for this one. Obviously, I took the tire off before I did that. But that's just a little uh, trick I discovered doing this one. All right, so this has the color shift green. And I left the interior alone. This one I did use the uh, phone pry bar and I pried that off. And uh, there's some sort of, it's like an acrylic glue holding it back on. All right. All right, this next one is, uh, yeah, that M4. This is actually what spurred the whole color shift thing. Uh, you know, this came this way from uh, from Indian GT. 
but then I did some research online about color shift paints and that's what made me buy those by Yehos. So yeah, this is a smaller inside diameter so the brakes look huge in this wheel, but it's okay. I mean this is a Liberty Walk M4 so I think it's believable it would have uh, some aftermarket brakes. Alright. here the Ford GT this is a great model so I saw a picture where it has uh, gold calipers and probably carbon ceramic brakes so I painted them like a dark gunmetal and this one I went and added a blue dark blue interior this time I did mask off the uh, that part of the dashboard but I still have to use some q-tips there's q-tips there's a little overspray getting under that tape so, yeah, that's a pretty straightforward one there. Let's do a, the skylines here. So I got this uh, skyline, and since it had red wheels, I decided to put in a silver, you know, rotor. And the caliper is uh, just silver, actually. So basically it's all silver, so I could see it a little bit better against the red wheel. Let's see, well, hold on, let me hit the focus again. There's a bit of an air gap around the rotor, so this actually looks pretty realistic. Alright. Now this one I painted a while ago, I have a separate video on just painting the, these wheels in the interior. So just shot some silver on them, and then this has a, like a light, what is it, like a tannish gray interior. So this one, it's got a gold caliper and some sort of silver rotor, okay. The last GTR. Uh, this one I painted uh, the interior like a grayish blue, it's kind of hard, it's kind of hard to see, but you can now see that the dashboard is still black. But, you know, this is a, well, I guess you can see the brakes there. I thought it would be more difficult with the, this many spokes. There you go. This one actually has blue calipers. Sorry, I didn't have them in the right location because they're spinning around. But you can see the blue caliper on this, on the inside. And same with the rear. All right. Uh, two Bentleys. So this is the uh, you know GT3 presentation, and I saw that it had yellowish calipers, and then I put silver rotors back there. Although they'd really probably be black, being carbon, but I want the contrast, right? All right, here's that road one again. Yeah, so goldish uh, calipers and like a kind of a dirty silver rotor. This one I painted a uh, tan and then again I used Q-tips to remove the extra paint from the top of the dashboard. Uh, I'm trying to put these on some display coasters up here, that's why it's taking so long. I'm going to let these spin around so you can look at them after. Uh, the very last one is a Skyline again, it's the R32, and this one, you can definitely see the straight slots, right, on the, the rotor. I made them exceptionally large, so uh, when you paint them, you'd have a better chance of actually still having the slot there. But if you paint it a lot, you're going to fill in those slots, so just be mindful of that. Okay, so yeah, gold code calipers. The interior of this is actually a color shift. I just, uh, you know, the interior is black. I think all mini GT interiors are black, so if you get some of these color shift paints, you can just shoot it right onto the plastic because it works best on a black surface. So that's, that works. Okay, so let's uh, get some, uh, Alright, 
it's uh, pretty hard to get this many vehicles into one shot. Hopefully you can see the, the brakes coming through. Could be the angle of the camera. Let's see if I can get a little light on them. Alright. Yeah, you can see the red caliper, the yellow caliper. Alright guys, well... It's, uh, you know, if you want to take the time, it's not, it's not rocket science, guys. Painting some pieces of plastic and using some school glue and some files to fit them into wheels. So you might want to give it a shot, you know, now that I think, that, now that I see that these things have brake systems, the only thing really missing is the, uh, silver paint in the mirrors. But again, well, you know what, I already did it on this one, I'll show you. Sorry, hit the, mic, hit the camera again. So, I use this uh, Molotow pen here. This is a, a pen with a nib. You want to use one with a plastic nib for the mirrors. And let me just do one there. The pen is so big. Let's see. Well, let's try the 4GT, because it has mirrors sticking out quite a, quite a bit. So the great thing about, you know, how Mini GT is they have the lip on the, the mirror itself. So, once you put the nib in, you just kind of move it around until it hits the lip of that mirror but you probably want to back with your finger all right well I did get a little extra on the outside but right, let's try this one let me back it up with my finger get the nib in there Just move it around a little bit all right there we go so Molotow, I bought this one off eBay, but I think you can get them at art, like a Michael's Arts and Crafts. I, th I think I've seen forum people say that. Alright. Alright, so back to what I was saying, I think now that these things have brakes and actual paint in the mirrors, it's, there really isn't much missing, you know, compared to say, a model that cost in the twenty to thirty dollar range, because many GTs have fantastic paint jobs, and they have fantastic wheels. I mean, they have fantastic tampo printing. In fact, I think they're better than like say a lot of the Tarmac Works hobbies, which use decals, and that that annoys me. So, yeah, I'm a big fan now. So, anyways, uh, yeah, I appreciate you watching. I'll put a link into uh, those breaks where you can get them. And then uh, hopefully we can see some videos of you modding your own mini GTs. Alright, thanks for watching. See you around.